Today's guest is Sean Gold. He is described as a lifelong entrepreneur, which is so easy to see from all the ventures he's involved in, which include, uh, he's the founder of Utopian Journey and Gold's Code. He's an entrepreneur in residence at Baltic Sandbox, a startup mentor at uh, Founder Institute. He's also involved with OpenVC, where you can go and read his articles about how to get started in your tech business and raise funding. Uh, Sean is also the author of four books, a speaker, a previous competitor on Jeopardy, and the list goes on. Uh, thank you for joining me today, Sean. Thank you. Wow, that introduction makes me sound tired. <laughs> Can't believe I did all that. Right. So talk a bit about yourself. So talk a bit about where you're from, who you are, and what you do. All right. Three simple questions, but I'll try to answer very simply. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Sean Gold, I am based in Miami, as I call it, Silicon Swamp, the new tech hub. <laughs> um, you know, I've been a lifelong entrepreneur um, ever since I was a kid, not based on really anything other than I want stuff. How do I get it? I came from a, a family that was always, you know, if you want something, work for it. So that's what I did. I always had to kind of rely on uh, my resourcefulness to make money so I could get things that all kids want, video games, comic books, right. you know, can be money. Not much has changed. Same thing I do now, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, I've always been just hustling as long as I can remember. I've, uh, I've been called unemployable, which sounds terrible, but that's usually a compliment from people in the know um, just because I've always just had my way of doing my own hustles, my own ventures, and just going my own way and forging my own path. And, you know, that's that's kind of my my mantra is take action and, and forge your own path, regardless of what you want to do. And, and I've done a lot, as, uh, as as you've described, and there's always more um, because there's no set path. There's lots of winding roads as you as you're trying to move forward, which is normal. It's nothing to get upset about or disturbed by. That's just how it is. So rewinding that, you mentioned you you started right away because like like all of us, you need money to to get the things you want. Um, and no matter what age you are, how did that first venture start for you? So um, I was about like eight or nine. And man, did I want Donkey Kong Country. You know, <laughs> I don't know if I date myself, but that was like the coolest thing I saw back in the 90s. Fun time. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I would sell... My mom worked at the malls as a sales representative for all like the big like cologne and perfume companies. So I had all the little tablets in my basement and I would sell them to the older kids that were going on dates because I wanted to smell nice. So, <laughs> you know, I would just sell it and that's it wasn't anything crazy. But, you know, when you make like $20 or $30 when you're 10 years old, it's like all the money in the world. And I had fun doing it. And that was just what I was into. And then... About the time I was 13, I had my first e-commerce business and I did that for about three years. And, and that's, again, dating myself. I, I remember I, I got a PayPal account. My parents thought it was a scam. They're like, what do you mean you keep money on there? Where's the money from? Who has the money? They're not a bank. Um, so I was, that was global. I was getting you know checks and money orders and PayPal from all over the world. Um, then around 16, I had educational assistance business. Fancy way of saying I did people's homework. Um, again, very national. I think it was global. That, that was a big one. And then when I was 17, I, I got into nightlife and marketing. And um, that was kind of like the watershed moment. That's where I like, it pulled me. It was my nexus point. That's, that's what I really wanted to do. And I just pursued it. I mean, it was the pull of it was so strong that I just nothing else mattered because I knew this is what I wanted to do and no one could talk me out of it. And everyone, believe me, everyone tried to talk me out of it. <laughs> like, 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 like a true entrepreneur, at least uh, back then, um, you know, early 2000s, entrepreneurs were thought of as like the cranks, the crackpots, they're like, get a real job. What are you going to do for a living? You know, all that stuff. Um, you don't hear much about that now because now being an entrepreneur is sexy. You know, the media <laughs> loves it. But back then it really wasn't. Um, but I pursued it. I mean, that was, you know, kind of my my main stick for almost two decades. You know, I just spent, you know, every weekend out at different hotels and nightclubs and yachts and mansions and anything you could think of when it comes to nightlife, especially in Miami and celebrities and athletes and high net worth people as clients. And that's what I did. That's how I built a network. That's how I just, you know, made all my connections. And then, you know, again, as I said earlier, the path is never straight. 
So, you know, I started getting pulled in different directions. People said, I, you know, I should start writing and I should start consulting and I should start learning about, you know, startups. And so I did, you know, I, it all intrigued me. It was hard at first, but it was just something that it took hold of me. And, you know, I'm still learning. I'm, I, I don't, I know, I like to say, I don't know anything, which is true, um, but I'm, I'm constantly learning, but I, I, I didn't have it in me where most people say, oh, you should, you know, stick to what you're good at or, you know, focus on your, your strengths. I focused on what I was curious about and what I was intrigued by, and what I was interested about. And I didn't have, you know, the pressure to conform to what everyone else said I should be doing because they didn't know. If I listened to them, I wouldn't have done anything. So it's essential for entrepreneurs to follow their own internal compass and they'll learn more and it'll be more fulfilling and it'll be more rewarding than any set path that anyone in your in your network can put you on. Um, you know, everybody in the world told me that I shouldn't move to Miami. I shouldn't go to the University of Miami because I got into the University of Michigan, which is a far better school, far better program. But I wanted to throw parties. And that was the best school in the area to go to if you <laughs> want to throw parties. And everyone kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And if I listened to them, I wouldn't be talking to you. I wouldn't have done anything because, you know, I ignored my inner calling and my inner passion to listen to what other people had to say. And you can't do that. It's, um, you know, there's a quote, I forget who said it, that some people have to be right because they're incapable of being anything else. Mm -hmm. And you can't listen to those people. You have to listen to to yourself because it's it's better to go the wrong way on your own path than the right way on someone else's. Wow. Yeah, that is that is a great quote. So, so how did you educate yourself early on? To, I mean, how did, I mean, you start in businesses, there are lots of things to know about running business, right? And uh, taxes and, and and all those sorts of wonderful things, right? And how do you, how, how do you prof, you know how do you ma- measure profit and measure success? Uh, were you self educating yourself as you went? I was self educating myself, and then I had my parents were helping me because they they encouraged it, um, especially because I didn't have to bug them for money anymore. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> believe me, they encouraged it. Um, yeah, I mean, I just uh, I like to think of myself as an autodidact, so I'd always just read, you know. Um, uh, there's a quote by George Bernard Shaw that, you know, his uh, education robbed him of learning what he wanted to do, of what, what he wanted to learn at home, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, and I feel like, again, education kind of robs people of what they need to know um, and, and what they want to know, especially, and that's not a knock on education or knowledge in general, but I feel like if you know what you want to do, then there's nothing stopping you from learning. I mean, especially now, now, again, you go to Open VC, and I've written a bunch of articles you know, you can go to any other website and find out about the taxes, what kind of what kind of company to incorporate the differences. Um, you know, I mean, you can go to the library if that's your thing. <laughs> you know, you can read a book, you can go to the bookstore. Um, I mean, it just, it, there's nothing preventing anyone from doing what they want to do. Excuses prevent them. But, you know, if they really want to do something, they can do it. And, you know, education, you know, it doesn't matter what school. I mean, nobody even asks what university I went to, even though I like bragging about it. Nobody asks, you know, (laughs) nobody cares. Um, Nobody cares about my SAT scores or my ACT scores. Like nobody cares. All the stuff that you care about that they drill into your head at such a young age is the most important thing. Nobody cares, you know. Um, So it's very beneficial, regardless of where you are in in your career journey, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, to constantly be learning. Just because information changes quickly and you can find yourself being obsolete, you know, not due to your own fault, but just because technology is rapidly changing and you want to be ahead of the curve. You know, you want to be on top of your game. And that really comes from sitting down and reading. And I don't mean social media. I mean, books. I mean, articles. I mean, scholarly articles, um, watching videos. I mean, you know, the, the world is your is your university if you really want to be enrolled. That's that's a good point. Yeah, I, in the IT fields, we always talk about you know YouTube University, right? There's so mm-hmm. much you can learn. I mean, I have a computer science background. I went to college to do it, and I never used any of that stuff to do my actual job. I was learning new stuff constantly because universities are, in some ways, while I agree with you, I value education. They're sometimes behind the curve, right? They're they're not teaching the most current stuff that you need to know to actually do the job in the world today, and so. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very um, happy to see many businesses are starting to de-emphasize college as a requirement and starting to open up and offer uh, jobs based on other things besides the college experience. Yeah, I mean, essentially, 
I think Naval Ra Ravikant said that the university degree today is, is the taxi medallion, you know, of the 21st <laughs> century. But it's also, I mean, you have to understand, you know, what are you really doing at university? To me, I was building a business, okay? I didn't care so much about the academics. I cared about what I wanted to do. But now I feel like people care about the academics, but they're taking the wrong academics. I mean, universities are businesses. And essentially, you know, it's like, it's great if you can climb the largest rock wall in the state before you're, you're, you're final in the rise and fall of Will Smith, you know, <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's great, but if you really want to be competitive, you know, you got to know what's at stake. You have to know what you want to learn and you have to, you have to be your own instructor. And that's a lot of people can't handle that. They want someone to tell them what to do. And if you're an entrepreneur, you have to, ha you have to tell yourself, you have to obey yourself. And, and that's hard because, you know, it's very easy to get lazy and complacent especially now with all the gadgets and everything. And, you know, I'm getting a tweet and a ping and a slack. And like, there's all these things that are essentially meaningless and it's very hard to focus without someone telling you to focus. And essentially you have to be the one to tell yourself to focus. So how do you decide uh, when you're going to do a new venture? Venture, What goes into the decision process? Is it, is it, you see a market that's untapped? Is it, you just want to try something? Um, to me, it's always been, if I'm really intrigued. If there if there's a natural curiosity and it's something I want to do, um, B to B SaaS is really boring to me. <laughs> you know, I I know it's a hot thing, but it's just very boring to me. So unless it's a, in a vertical I'm really interested in, I don't want to deal with it. Things that intrigue me are things that deal with creativity, entrepreneurship, venture capital, um, hospitality and nightlife, fintech to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm intrigued by engineering, but I know nothing about it. So I'm not going to get into that field. You know, I'm intrigued by it. I like it, you know, but I'm not going to do anything with it. It just really depends because, you know, I have a lot of conversations with a lot of other successful entrepreneurs and we always like talk about, you know, essentially we complain about what we're working on and what we're doing. And we always try to like come up with an idea. And this is especially the case during the pandemic where I was just bouncing ideas every day off people. Let's do this. And I'm like, oh, I don't feel like it. Let's do this. And it's very hard to stumble upon something unless you're moving. Mm. So you constantly have to have those conversations. And there's, you know, there's, there's a website, there's kernel kernel is people throwing ideas out there who wants to fund this, wants to help me build it. You know, so I glance at kernel and see what people are working on. There's Slack channels that you can see what people are working on. Um, but most of my stuff has always been, they've always appealed to me internally. You know, nightlife is not something people want to get into or do, you know, but to me, I fell in love with it. So I wanted to get into it and, and do it. Um, you know, same thing when, when I had my e-commerce website, same thing with, with Utopian Journey, because I love the creative process. I love writing. I love the comic book, graphic novel medium. You know, I, I just want to go for it. I just, I do my research and I just act and I, and I see what happens. I mean, every startup journey has unknown destinations to the traveler. So if something doesn't work out, it might lead to something else. Um, or you might be that, that thing that doesn't work might still get you, you know, a contact that you wouldn't have that could open doors to something else. And there's, there's a lot of unexpected serendipity that happens if you're out there. Right. Um, I think most people make the mistake that just by being patient, something extraordinary is going to happen to them. And that's not the case. Nothing extraordinary is going to happen to you until you go out there and make it happen. Oh, that's so true. So as, as you, um, as you help other people, right, and they and they pitch ideas to you, or or they, they you're giving advice. I'm curious, how much of that uh, would you say they need to really understand the market they want to get into, right? You understand the nightlife market. Um, is that vital for them to really thoroughly understand that, or or, or can they, you know, in the, in the IT world where I work, where we build software, a lot of times what we call it fast fail, right? We go out and try to do something real quick. Uh, inexpensive, see if it's going to work. If it doesn't work, we just rolled into the next idea or next uh, thing we're going to try to build until we find one that uh, resonates and then we build it, right? Fully build it out. Is that somewhat similar in the in the VC world? I mean, well, it depends. Um, it's two different questions because the VC world is more like this. If they're going to be even viable for venture capital, uh -huh. they are going to have to have milestones already, which include right. revenue or include tons of users or something. Right. Um, for the individual though, I mean, I encourage everyone to go out there and just try it, you know, just explore and just see because yeah, there's fast fail, but it's not really failing if you learn something. 
And you do have to have a command of the market, but not to the extent that you have to know every single thing about it. I think if your idea is good enough and you can demonstrate that people are willing to pay for it and people are willing to, to go with you and on your journey and support you, then you don't have to have the best you know, market expert. You don't have to be the best market expert. You could hire the best market expert. You can find the best market expert as an advisor. Um, you, know, you essentially just have to be the person that has this idea that can steer the ship and that could use this idea to make money and profit. And not all businesses are investable. You know, it's the, the, we have to get away from this notion that you're going to be the next billionaire. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can be just as happy doing something you love to do, working for yourself, being fulfilled and making a nice living at $800,000 a year or a million dollars a year or $5 million a year. You know, it's fine. But I feel like so many people now there's a quest to become you know, I have to be the next Mark Zuckerberg. I have to be the next Elon Musk. And it's like, oh, that's really hard to do, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> right. I think you should focus on being the next you, you know, and, and just do something, you know, as I tell a lot of entrepreneurs, especially the entrepreneurs, I say, do something that you enjoy doing, okay? Monetize something that doesn't feel like work to you and, and do that and have fun with it and, mm -hmm. you know, see where it takes you. Don't follow the path of conformity and get into coding because everyone you know is getting into coding. If you don't even like to code, you know, because you can always just start a company and find someone who does like to code and let them, you know, put it together for you. Um, there, so you have to work smart about it. You have to work hard, but you also have to work smart about it as well. That makes sense. Do you think some of that is just chasing celebrity? Of course. It's all yeah. vanity metrics. Everybody wants to be you know, cool and hip. I mean, I come from nightlife where it's all, it's all a mirage, you know, and it's just, they want to, you know, they, they want to be known for something and you can be known for something. It's fine. But, you know, at the end of the day, you also want to be able to sleep well at night. You want to be able to pay your bills. You also want to have good people to work with. You also don't want to have to go to a job and deal with crazy people that you don't want to work. I mean, I think we forget why we become entrepreneurs, you know, this, we don't become entrepreneurs so we can have the giant mansion and the yacht and the, and the, and the lawnmower with the GPS in case we get lost mowing the lawn. You know, <laughs> I think we become entrepreneurs because we just want to do our own thing. We want to set our own schedule. We want to make money doing what we love to do. And if it makes a lot of money, great. And if it doesn't, at least we, we, we had the, the pleasure of trying and at least we had our own thing that no one could take from us. Um, and I feel like a lot of people just are in it to Give me the money so I can exit. Give me the money so I can do this. And, yeah. you know, it's like, do your own thing that, I mean, follow your own, your, your own passion, forget what everyone else is doing, focus on what you want to do. And, and it'll take you places. Now it might not be places that you want to go, but it's better <laughs> than sitting still. And once you get there, you have to kind of figure out what's next. Wow. Yeah, that's true. So as you've done this uh, journey and you, and you've done a lot of ventures, you've been involved with a lot of, of things. What's something that you would, you know, if, if we came to you, Sean, and said, Sean, uh, you have the power to make a change, to make a difference. What's something about this process that people go through and uh, of starting businesses, because uh, that seems, you know, that you would say uh, we should rethink? I think the notion that we should rethink is that everybody in the world has to have a deck to, to, uh, to, to do their business and all that. You don't need any of that. Forget the executive summary. Forget the deck. Have something that you want to do and just go out there and do it. Go get the Wix website, go on Fiverr, do whatever you got to do. Start immediately, have yourself up and running and learn as much as you can and focus on doing it yourself. You know, again, people think that because they watch Shark Tank and I call this the Shark Tank effect where everyone tunes in the Shark Tank 30 minutes late, changes the channel before the next commercial break and says, I got this, it's going to be easy. And it's not easy. Um, you know, it just, it's, it, it's, it's extremely hard to raise capital. It's extremely hard to build a viable business. It's extremely hard to have a product that millions of people are going to do. I just, I, I want everyone to start small. I mean, cause I started small. I mean, I never, I didn't have what was available today to entrepreneurs. Incubator was like something that you put the eggs in accelerator, <laughs> right. a startup accelerator is what happened when your car didn't work. <laughs> you know, um, a boot camp is where you went to if you broke the law or you went to the army. You know, we didn't have all these things that you could just apply to and sign up for. I had to rely on resourcefulness. I had to look at my wall and say, well, I don't have a lot of money, but what can I do with what I have? Who can I reach out to? And just build something and see if it works. You know, mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't worry about trying to raise a million dollars for something because you have a hunch because it's probably not going to get funded. 
build something that you can do on your spare time that you can make money from and, and go forward with it. And we have to stop making assumptions because I see a lot of, you know, early stage entrepreneurs that by year three, they estimate they're going to have a million people paying $10 a month or something for their product. And I'm like, listen, try and get a hundred people to pay $10 a month. Okay. <laughs> Let's start small because you've never done this before. And to get a million people to pay $10 a month, I mean, that's, it's probably one of the hardest things to do, especially if you don't, if you've never had that level where you had to get a hundred thousand pay, paying 500,000, you know, let's start small. Let's get a thousand people. Let's get a hundred people. Let's get 500 people. Let's see what we can do with what you have. And then you can think about scaling it up. Um, and it also goes to the same people. I think they're going to make $500 million in year five. You know, it's like, all, there's all these crazy assumptions that they're going to do. And people just, it, it's one thing to have a, you know, self-belief in yourself. And this, you know, the value of yourself and your talent, what you can do, but it's quite another to just make blanket assumptions on things that people that are in the know are going to be, you know, this is clearly impossible. Unless, you know, you've done it before where you actually had a startup and you scaled it to 5 million people at $10 a month, and then you sold it for a hundred million dollars and you're doing it again, then we know. But most people are just like, you know, they worked in corporate or they haven't even had a job and this is what they're thinking. And, you know, you don't know that you don't know it, it's extremely hard. So yeah, I just think focus on yourself, do the things that are simple and, and see where it takes you. Yeah, I would say even the person who did that before, right, and sold their business would not say that it's going to you know hit hit hot the second time. No, it, it, it's very difficult to, you know, there's a lot of case studies out there that, you know, you can be a successful founder in your first startup or your second startup, but your next startup might fail. I mean, I've looked through that personally with people I've worked with that they had a successful startup and then the second one, they had a closed shop and the third one had to be delayed. I mean, it's, everyone has a, has a different journey. Some people take some five attempts to get to a good business. Some people do it on the first try. It never goes as quickly as you, as you think. A lot of people have to spend years and years building it out because that's the process of things. Um, if you're not prepared to spend year at least the first two years not making any money in the first two years just grinding it out then i don't i wouldn't say it's for you and it's a tough road because you're paving it yourself but if you really want to do this then you should do it absolutely so what's next for you what's coming up here in the future what's well, an interesting question <laughs> because as you know i'm plugged into a lot of different things yeah. so uh, my passion projects is film and and just entertainment projects comic books graphic novels my professional projects are just as fun to me uh, um so you know venture capital staying and staying plugged in with accelerators and entrepreneurs and speaking universities and panels and whatnot and for me things change like hourly it's like the weather i mean i always have a different email coming in and there's things that could happen next week i don't know about today and that's the exciting part. When you do this long enough, you have so many people reaching out and you have so many things that you can you can get into and open doors for. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the quote, it's not what you know, but who you know. Yeah. Um, there's another quote that I think people should realize. It's, it's who knows you, oh. you know? So a lot of things, if you're good at what you do or just a good person to work with or just a good connect, people will reach out to you and they'll give you opportunities. They'll give you clients. They'll, you know, introduce you to people. So it, it's good to be out there and it's good to be a resource and it's good to just help other people on their journey within reason, because I don't want a million people texting me saying, give me a million dollars. Okay. <laughs> but, but if it's something within reason, you know, 99% of the time, if it's like an introduction or a LinkedIn connection or something, and the person is genuine, it's fine. But, uh, you know, a lot of times people tend to be like, oh, you said, ask if Andy thinks that's what I'm asking for. I need a deck review, a check, and a manifold for a 1994 Mustang. You got it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, you're right. And especially on the internet, right? We get, mm -hmm. get the craziest uh, things people think that they can ask for just randomly. It's, it's, it's nuts. It's a casual thing. Hey, I saw you. <laughs> I saw your LinkedIn. Can you introduce me to these people at this fund? Or my, my favorite one was uh, one of my favorites. I had someone call me. And they wanted $3 million for their startup, but they also had a TV show idea. So if I could just, you know, open those doors for him. Yeah, sure. Which I'll get on that. We'll have, we'll have you a TV show and your money before lunch. Uh, <laughs> do you, do you find that you end up investing or getting a, you know, a part, becoming a partner in some of those ventures? Some, sometimes. 
Um, not so much investing because I usually work more as just an outside contractor for a lot of startups. Um, you know, but it depends because usually with a lot of the, the companies I worked with, and this is true with the nightlife, I, I move fast within organizations and do more than what's asked of me and what's required because one, I can, and I'm on the same team and whatnot, but also a lot of people don't know what they're doing and they stumble and it's really easy stuff that they shouldn't stumble over. And, you know, I, I tend to pick up the pieces and deliver. I mean, I think, you know, another bit of advice that everyone should know, especially entrepreneurs is that it's very hard to find people that are honest at what they do and reliable. And if you can find someone that is honest and reliable, then they're worth their weight in gold, pun intended, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's, um, it, it's essentially, you know, because people are, I don't want to be mean, but they're nitwits. I mean, you email someone to do something and it takes, you know, five minutes and they don't do it for a week and you can't, you can't scale, you can't grow, you can't get things done. You know, I, I always ask people if they could kindly take care of stuff in between doing nothing at home and nothing at work, you know, <laughs> so but a lot of people don't, they just get distracted. They just, I'll oh, get it right on it. And they don't, they never do. And they have to remind them. And it's, these aren't heavy lifts. These are very, you know, simple things anyone could do. I just feel like people, they, they're too distracted and you know, they're not really committed and they're, they're not focused. So you have to kind of find the people that are, and that's probably one of the hardest things in, in any business, any career path, it's finding people you can work with. Finding people that are just normal, finding people that, you know, just, I sent an email, they responded, I need this done, they took care of it, they need something from me, I gave it to them, it's great, we're all good, we're, we're all get along, we all get, we're a great team, and it's extremely hard to find that, I, I think it's got to be like one in 1000 or one in 10,000, we've all experienced it, we've all had, whether you were at school, had a group project, and you ended up being the one doing the work, or you go, you, you have a job, and you have to work with other people, and the people just have nothing going on and they don't know what's going on or how to do anything. I mean, we, we all deal with it and you just, we wonder, you know, how do these people function? So it's very hard to find good connections that uh, people you can work with and people you can do business with and people you can have relationships with. Um, a lot of the best people I work with our relationships have lasted for years, you know, and even though we might not work together anymore, it just, I can look back on something say 10, 15 years ago and be like, they, they, they came through, they were good. That is a rare trait in every field, right? Even in, in the work I do, uh, hiring, I agree with you, hiring uh, somebody who's motivated, who just who just jumps in, figures it out. That's the biggest thing we talk about. I want problem solvers to figure things out. Um, and if you need skills, some training, education, I'll pay for it, right? So I that, that's you. beautiful. I mean, it just, uh, you again, it's something where I will get you the tools you need. Right. And it's tough because a lot of people that want to work you know, essentially have to go through the 50,000 bullet points of this is what you should do. And it's like, I'm not going to read that, <laughs> you know, like, why do you put that up? Wanted someone that is motivated and has a brain done. Okay. You know, it's, let's talk about our corporate culture. It's like my personal corporate culture is this, you're honest, you're authentic, and you're not going to steal done. That's it. Okay. You don't have to go through the corporate culture. We're not Aztecs. Okay, we're not no art, no no corporate anthropologist is going to look back on us a hundred years from now and realize that casual Fridays is what drove the business. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of it's a lot of BS stuff that nobody needs. Just be honest, be reliable, be motivated, and don't steal, and you'll be good. You'll go so far in life. Oh, well, those are good words to live by, and I think we'll leave off there, Sean. I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast and. Uh, I will make sure to include all the links to, the, to your stuff uh, so people can find you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was an absolute pleasure.